Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. What about in the trichoderma itself? Is is it getting feedback from the plant? So it, it, oh. it, it, it is. Yes. So yes. Okay. That, that is really important. There's always the two-way dialogue between the plant and the organisms that it infects, that, that infect it. And so, um, for sure, one of the things it gets is all the nutrition it needs, all the carbon, all the uh, all the nutrients. That's where it gets it. And so, the plant is is uh, uh, they're a co-equal partner. There's a really intriguing interaction with uh, either mycorrhizae or rhizobium, and the plant. So if you have, for then this is pretty much applicable to either one. Uh, you have a, a common symbiotic pathway, is is what it's called, um, and the if the rhizobium, for example, is in the seed or in the soil, and it is uh, cued to in, to grow and infect. By, by the plant. And at the same time, the, the rhizobium uh, uh, sends signals to the plant that allows it to, to uh, be infected. Then once it's infected, there's a thing called an infection thread, and the infection thread takes the, the rhizobium cells and it actually gives it a pathway to the cells that the plant wants to have it in, infect. And then the plant gets in there and infects those, those cells, and you begin to have nodule formation. And then that's a whole, it, a whole complex interaction that, uh, um, so that the rhizobium then is, uh, um, it makes it changes its type from a free living bacteria to a, a bacterioid is called, which is a cell in the in the rhizobium and the I mean in the nodule and the nodule is a combination of tissue from both the plant and the and the rhizobium. But trichoderma would be different. That's not infecting the plant. Per yes, it is infecting the plant. It, it is. So it is. Do you have that same? relationship where the trichoderma is actually inside plant cells? Yes. Yes. It's in, that's what I mean by the, the endophytic nature of it. It's internal to the plant. So, and one of the advantages to this system is if you had a free living organism out in the soil, it would be subject to all the issues of, of uh, drought or unfavorable conditions that would uh, it might not survive. But if it's in the plant, if the plant survives, so does the trichoderma. So the the plant protects the trichoderma, and the trichoderma causes benefit to the plant. So it's a true symbiotic relationship. Given that you have this two way conversation between the plants and the trichoderma. Let's say powdery mildew again affects the leaves. The plant starts doing things to suppress it. Does the trichoderma get feedback on like, well, okay, that's infecting you, so it can then evolve and iterate? So it, it no, I don't. I don't think so. But it does though. The trichoderma just induces the plant to produce the chemicals that control the fungus or the, the pathogen. And how does the tri is the trichoderma then say, like mildew lands on leaf? that puts some sort of chemical in the plant uh, sap and then the trichoderma can identify that and say, whoa, we got an invader here. And then it's no, a not, not quite. The trichoderma, uh, when it's infected the plant, it does this gene priming thing when in interaction with membranes. Uh, and there's a whole lot of chemicals that the trichoderma or rhizobium or mycorrhizae producing, they're not the same, uh, that, that uh, interact with the plant 
and then you get the signal transduction, and then the plant takes it from there. So the so the trichoderma doesn't know whether there's an infection or not. Got it. But it just makes it possible for the plant to control the infection. Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.